Hi, I'm Cindy with Earth Science Resources, and today we're speaking with Andrea Cadena. She is a petrophysicist at Murphy Oil. My name is Andrea Cadena, and I'm a Colombian youth scientist who ended up doing a deep dive in the discipline of petrophysics by different opportunities that presented myself through my profession, through my career. Uh, right now, I'm the onshore staff petrophysicist for Morphe Oil in Houston, Texas. So, like I said, I'm a petrophysicist, but you may be wondering what a petrophysicist do. Uh, basically, what I do is to take logs, which are basically a measurement of either the response of the rock to an external um, source of energy. It can be an electrical current, it can be a sonic wave, it can be an electromagnetic field. So we measure that response, or it can be a spontaneous um, signal that comes directly from the formation, for instance, the gamma rays. So we take all those measurements, we look at them, we have some uh, mathematical uh, models that we apply, and with that we can provide a characterization of the rock in a quantitative way. So quantitative, we can get reservoir properties such as porosity, permeability, uh, saturation of fluids, what kind of fluids those are, is it water, is it oil, is it gas, how mobile those fluids are. Um, and by putting all that together, we can, you know, provide a, an idea of, you know, how prospective a specific reservoir is for, in my particular case, for oil and gas exploration and production. Now, petrophysics is neat in the sense that it's kind of the converging point of pretty much all the disciplines. So I feed up information to geologists, to engineers. It can be reservoir engineers, it can be completion engineers, drilling engineers, and also to geophysicists. So I guess, yeah, everybody at some point in their career go back to their petrophysicist friend, you know, asking them for some information, uh, which is nice. Um, and I guess also because of that, um, as far as I know, there's no degree in petrophysics. So there's not a school or I think there's one in the UK actually that give you, you know, have, you have a bachelor of science in petrophysics or you have a master's in petrophysics or a PhD in petrophysics. All the petrophysicists are basically trained on the job or they went into a school that they have a research group in petrophysics. Uh, you know, some of those schools, maybe, you know, UT, University of Houston, the University of Oklahoma. And I guess because of that nature of the, of the discipline of petrophysics, you'll also see that pretty much any um, sci scientist can be a petrophysicist. So myself, I'm a geologist, like I said at the beginning, but I also have friends who are petrophysicists and actually their background is engineering. I have seen petroleum engineers, civil engineers, uh, mechanical engineers doing petrophysics, also physics, pure physics, mathematicians, and geophysicists. And each one of those provide like a different uh, outlook and way of do, looking at the rock and, and provide petrophysical support. How I ended up where I'm now. So like I said at the beginning, uh, I'm a geologist. So I did my bachelor's in geology in Colombia. Uh, Universidad Industrial de Santander, which is Industrial University of Santander in Bucaramanga, Colombia. When I started my geology degree, I didn't even know what geology was, to be honest. I just knew that I wanted to do something outdoors, that I wanted to do a science. And my oldest sister boyfriend at the time was going for geology school. And then she said, oh, you know, that's so cool because he's traveling all the time. And I thought, I want to do the same thing. And I signed up for geology. That's how I ended up uh, <laughs> in the geology program. Also, it was odd in the sense that at the time in that program, the, your first geology class, you will only take it two years into the program. So my first two years, I was only looking at, you know, math, calculus, chemistry, physics, but no geology whatsoever. Uh, but I ended up finally going, you know, into the geology class and going to the field trip. I just loved it. I, I thought it was really neat. Although I have to clarify that at the time I wanted to do volcanology. I mean, it's obvious I didn't go into that. Uh, and that has also to do with, with what I mentioned at the beginning when I introduced myself and is what the opportunities are presented to you through your career. 
uh, when I was just finished, uh, I got the opportunity to get an internship with BP in Colombia. It was a six month internship and that completely re-steer um, my geology career. So in that internship, I was doing um, uh, a structural modeling for some of their fields in Colombia. And some of the information that I was using are dig meter logs, which basically is a log that you run, you know, into the formation and see the deep and azimuth of the beds, of the formation beds. Uh, so that was my first um, contact with any type of logs and, or anything that will resemble some petrophysics. And of course, I was looking at gamma ray logs as well, which are pretty basic and give you an idea about the lithology. So I finished my um, my internship. I did my, I finished my bachelor's and then right after that, I got a job as a junior geologist for a small operator in Colombia. The good thing about Colombia is that you can go directly into the industry without having a master's degree. So pretty much everybody where they do graduate and then they go straight to work either in mining or most likely in the oil and gas industry. And with this company, I was basically, I was a geologist for most of the time and that put me in contact with my for the second time around with a part of petrophysics that is operational petrophysics, which is basically planning the acquisition of logs and then you know witness and make sure that that acquisition goes well and quality data is being acquired. So I did that like for one and a half years. Then I, and I have to clarify that through all that time, it was in the oil boom. So oil price was 150 bucks at the time. So pretty much everybody got hired, everybody got, got employed. And I have to say that I was, you know, really lucky to get into, you know, getting my degree right at that time. Uh, now it's getting a little bit better, but I, but I know people who is currently graduating, which is somewhat of a struggle, because there's a lot of people, you know, seeking for jobs with experience and plus the new graduates. So it's a little bit of a different situation right now. Uh, so at the, then after that, like I said, oil was 150 bucks. There was this company called Lukoil, which is a Russian operator. It's a pretty big company. Um, and they has a, an exploration block in Colombia. And that exploration block was pretty close to the field that I did my, my internship job um, project for. So they were looking for a petrophysicist. And uh, I applied, uh, I got an interview and you know got the job. Um, I also have to say when I got that job, Actually, all my previous job that included, I was always the youngest, uh, the only female, and the only one from the coast region of Colombia. And you may not say, well, you were Colombian, you know, everybody's Colombian in Colombia. But, you know, there are very few school of geology in Colombia. At the time, there were only five schools. None of those schools were located where I'm from. So you actually have to travel, you know, to go to college. And uh, so there was pretty much no awareness of what geology was um, or is uh, when I was finished high school. So I guess that also why there's so few geologists from, from the region I'm from in Colombia. Right now it's a little bit different. They're, they have a, a few more schools, actually one in my hometown. So, so that is neat. Um, so yeah, so I, then I ended up working with Lukoil as you know, over there, they have only one of each. So one petrophysicist, one reservoir engineer, one geophysicist, blah, blah, blah. Because it was a you know, small asset for them. Um, but that pretty much taught me a lot of the basic of formation evaluation. I guess you also uh, may hear that, you know, petrophysics are a very broad discipline, uh, but it's also known as formation evaluation, which is basically porosity, permeability, wear saturation, but it's, you know, Petrophysics encompasses much more than that whenever you start branching out into the other disciplines, as I, as I said earlier. So I worked for them for about two years, but I had that little bug that I wanted to go to grad school. And uh, I got bored basically. <laughs> and I applied to grad school. I applied to the University of Oklahoma for a master degree in geology. And uh, I got accepted and I moved to the States in 2010. Uh, at OU, like I said, I got my master in geology. I didn't do any petrophysics. Actually, my, my research was in deep water sequence stratigraphy and seismic stratigraphy of offshore deposits um, in Colombia. So nothing to do with petrophysics. But what I will say is that to having that petrophysical knowledge um, 
all the, that at the time was somewhat basic because I just started in the discipline, really helped me to you know, add more information and, and put more meat into my research work. Um, and I love that. And also having some work experience before I went into grad school really helped me in the sense that uh, you think more about the application of what you're learning whenever you're in grad school and also the practicality of what you're learning. So I was a little bit of a different type of student when I was at OU compared to, to my classmates because they were going directly from bachelor's into master's, but I had worked before. Um, and I think that made me an interesting candidate uh, for the different companies that were recruiting to OU. Uh, one of those being Marathon, Marathon Oil here in Houston. Um, so at the end of my, of my master's, I got an offer from Marathon and I got an offer from other companies, although the only one that offers me a petrophysics role was Marathon. And I thought that was, that was interesting and, and kind of appealing, you know? And at the same time, the group that I got that offer for was their technology group, which at the time was reserved only for PhDs um, or people with a lot of experience. So I felt really, you know, honored and humbled that I got that offer. I was like, Hey, yeah, I'll go there. And I did. And I'm glad I did. Uh, basically, my profile and most of my learning and my build-up as a petrophysicist was, I mean, happened through my seven years in Marathon. So I got to work with a lot of great people, uh, you know, great geophysicists, great petroleum engineers, reservoir engineers, and whatnot. And also having this idea of reservoir characterization and pulling in a little bit of information of each one of the disciplines in order to characterize the rock. Uh, so I'm really grateful for that. I, I thought it was, it was a great experience. Um, but, you know, it was time to move on. Uh, you want to meet other company cultures, other assets. And from there, I moved to Morphe. It's been two years now. And now I'm Morphe and the, the onshore uh, petrophysicist. So basically for the U.S. asset, which is the Eagle Fruit, and then their Canada asset, which are Moni and Duvernay. And that's where I am. So an advice to my younger self. I guess I have two advice. I used to have one, but now I added another one. So I guess one is take the chances, take the opportunities that come along. You know, I ended up being a petrophysicist because I took the chances, I took the offers, I took the opportunities. Sometimes people, things get offered to you and you turn it down immediately without giving it a thought of, would I like it? Would I be good at this or not? Um, sometimes you'll be surprised at the perception that you have for yourself and the, the perception other people have about yourself. Uh, so taking those offers, you know, it can pan out um, sometimes. And also, you know, if you don't know something, hey, I didn't know any petrophysics when I got into this, but I said, hey, sure, I'll do it. And I, you're learning. I mean, people are smart and you learn along the way and, and you seek for support and mentorship and, and, and you can do it. Uh, so that's one. And then the other one is the geoscience community is really small. Even though it doesn't look like, uh, like I said, in Colombia, there, only, there were only back in the day, uh, five schools of geology in the entire country. So every geologist in Colombia know each other, or at least know someone who knows someone. And when I went to Oklahoma, I realized that that is not also true for Colombia, that is also true for the world. I have met people, you know, in Europe, in Asia, who are just scientists, and then you start asking, and you know, sure enough, they know someone who knows someone who knows you. So your reputation follows you everywhere, for good or for bad. So whatever you do, which is good, if it is good, it's nice because you know that goes ahead of you. And when people refer back to your name, and you know, they have good things to say about you. But if it is not so good, people will also be saying things about you. So, you know, keep that in mind and I guess, you know, the oil industry, the geoscience community, the oil industry is even smaller. So my guess will be, you know, in planetary geology and environmental geology and any other uh, geoscience discipline, the community gets even smaller. So just to keep an eye on that and, and keep that in mind all the time. Mm -hmm.